Once again, Shavua Tov, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> We've got a very special parsha, and also it's a special schus in this uh, in this year, in this leap year. We can focus on many more parshias because uh, usually in a regular year we would read Vayakel and Pikude, which is the previous parsha, and our parsha. We would read them. Uh, at one week. And uh, this year, we divide the parish years into two different Shabbos. So now we can focus on each um, on each parasha because both of them are very interesting and <clears throat> they are similar. It's not that uh, we just connected them randomly together, but intentionally, uh, 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 we connect them because they are connected. The um, the Mishkan, um, <clears throat> the vessels that were made for the Mishkan, the clothes of the Koyanim. So, <clears throat> for that reason, they are connected. But nevertheless, we can find something <clears throat> unique and special. <clears throat> in each and every parsha. So <clears throat> today we're going to talk about uh, a few topics. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about the main purpose of the uh, temples, talking about also the, um, the temporary temple, the tabernacle, uh, uh, the Mishkan, and also the two temples that uh, uh, were in Yerushalayim. And we also are going to talk about the eternity uh, of the temples, which is the, the holiness, the, the presence of Hashem that still exists, whether it still exists, where it still exists, and how exactly does it still exist. So once again, two topics. First of all, the main purpose of the uh, the temples and second of all the eternity of them what lasts till this very day we'll mention also the topic of going up to harbais and this is something very important we actually had a we had not long ago a lecture at um uh, at the Bet Chabad about the Ark. Very interesting lecture about uh, where the Ark is today. And one of the things that we've got to be careful is that if you ever think about searching for the Arks, there are certain places that we aren't allowed to enter because of the fact that they are still holy till this very day. Even going up to Harabayas, there are certain people that do go. But uh, in Chabad, this is something that's prohibited. We aren't allowed to go. We aren't pure enough. And um, there's no point in trying to jump the gun. When it will be the right time, we'll be able to go up there properly. And we'll be able to really feel the holiness and the Kedusha. So today, even though technically it might be uh, possible, and maybe we can even uh, uh, go to the mikvah right before and make sure that we don't become impure even though that's hard because you never know. But the Rebbe always spoke about doing things properly, doing things in the right way, doing things in a lechatchila way, which means uh, doing it uh, um, uh, in a proper way and not trying to do it uh, behind the back or as a thief or something like that. So... It's very interesting because we've got an, a discussion between the and the Nachmanides. And the discussion is, what is the purpose of the temple? The uh, Nachmanides speaks about the fact that the temple is a place where Hashem rests. And the Nachmanides specifies. The Nachmanides speaks about the Ark, Arain Habris. Uh, 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 the covenant, uh, the, the, the ark is basically a place uh, 
where Hashem says, I will meet you above the ark. This is a place where I rest, and this is a place where we can talk. These are all from previous parashiyas, but the point of the Nachmanides is to tell us that after all, the idea of uh, uh, the idea of the Mishkan, the idea of Beis Hamikdash, the temples, is for Hashem to rest there, and for Hashem to be able to have a connection with us through the temple. That is the purpose. That is the idea. And here we have a different approach of the Maimonides to the purpose of the temples. And the, Nachman, the Maimonides also asks a question, and this is a question that's brought in several places. And the question is, how is Hashem bound to a physical material place? How can you say that uh, um, <clears throat> there is a certain amount of square meters where Hashem rests? And that's where he talks to you. He does not exist anywhere else. Can you not meet him in your davening if you aren't in Yerushalayim? We all know that there's something so important about coming three times a year to Beis Hamikdash. It's a special command that Hashem says, Shalash pa'amim bashana calls three times a year, every single male should come to Yerushalayim and should witness and should see uh, um, the Holy Temple. And also there, there could be two main reasons to the idea of coming and facing Hashem in Yerushalayim. And these, these two reasons <clears throat> are once again the argument, the discussion between the Rambam, the Maimonides, and the Nachmanides. What the Rambam says, he says, I am resting in the temple. It's more about our avoider, our offerings, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are bringing when we come to Beis Amikdash. When we come to Beis Amikdash, we bring Hashem Karbanais, we bring Hashem offerings. In other words, we go through a certain kind of process, a certain kind of elevation that makes us greater, makes us bigger, makes us more connected to Hashem. And for that reason, Beis Amikdash is so special and so holy. It's not all about Hashem resting there. Yes, there were very, uh, quite a few miracles over there, but it's not only about the miracles that Hashem made in Beis Hamikdash. It's more about what we do when we go there. That's the whole idea of the Karbanos. We know that a, a majority of the Avoda that was there throughout the entire day, right? We know the vessel of the menorah, for example, lighting the menorah, bringing the incense, um, entering the Holy of Holies, Kodesh HaKadoshim, that happens only once a year. Lighting the menorah happened once a day. The majority of the work of the Kohanim was bringing offerings. People who bought donations, <clears throat> who came to pay their vows, who came to uh, uh, bring offerings for kaparata vonot, to basically uh, uh, um, make up for certain sins that they, uh, that they did. If it was intentionally or by mistake, but the idea of the offerings was basically to, uh, 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 um, to become better people. 
this is what uh, um, uh, uh, the Maimonides claims. This is the main idea of Beis Hamikdash, of the temple. And we know it's also interesting that in Parshas Vayakhel, in the previous Parsha, and also in Parshas Truma, it speaks about donating to, uh, towards the building of uh, uh, the Mishkan, of the temple. And when it speaks about the donation, it says that kol nediv lev a person with a generous heart will donate towards the temple. And once again, this is something that we see that's connected to Am Yisrael uh, um, uh, basically making up asking from Hashem, making sure that Hashem forgives us after sinning with the golden calf. The sin of the golden calf was a very, very, very bad sin to the extent that Hashem wanted to wipe out the entire Jewish nation. And that's why there are certain opinions that the whole building of the Mishkan was to basically uh, uh, um, uh, to cause Am Yisrael as a sign that Am Yisrael truly regrets what they did and that Am Yisrael is making up for what they did, a kapara for this bad sin. This was the idea of the uh, uh, of the Mishka. And that's why it was, it was also a lot up to them. It was up to their generous heart and whoever wanted to donate more was able to donate more. So here, once again, donations show that it's our avoider. It's up to us. It's not that the gold came from Hashem and Hashem said, here's the gold, go build the Mishka. No. It came from uh, our own pocket, so to speak. Literally, it came from uh, uh, um, their own pocket. And it says that the woman even donated more than the men. So uh, it, even, it says that Am Yisrael gave so much donations that there was, there, was, there was too much, too much money there that Moshe Rabbeinu said, stop, tell them that there's too much, don't bring any more. I'm just sure I was so much devoted to, uh, uh, to building this Mishkan. And not only to building the Mishkan, but to elevating themselves, to becoming better people after the sin of the golden calf. They wanted to become more and more close to Hashem. So this is the idea. This is according to the Maimonides. Once again, this is the idea of the temple. It's more kind of a, a, an avoid of the human and less the presence of Hashem. And then Ahmadides once again says it's more the idea of the presence of Hashem and less the avoid. But the truth is, and this is what the Rebbe speaks about, there isn't a, a real argument between the two because both of them agree that there's a combination of, 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 of both ideas. Because also the Nachmanides agrees that there is the avoid of the Karbanis, that there is this whole idea of bringing offerings and that's up to us. And that when we come to the temple, we bring three times a year, we used to bring the offerings. And also the Maimonides agrees that that's a place where Hashem rests. We're not coming just to any random place. We are coming to a special Hashem is present. How do we know? Because it says Keshem Shabal Lirais, Keshem Shabal Lehei Rais, in, in the exact same way as a person came to, sh he showed up, he came to show himself three times a year. He also came to see a show. Kach Lirais, he came to witness, he came to see. What did he come to see? He came to see the presence of Hashem. He came to see the miracles that Hashem performed in Beis HaMikdash. And for that reason, 
there is no argument between the two. Maybe the difference is, is what to put the focus on. But both ideas exist when we come to talk about the Mishkan and when we come to talk about the Beis Amikdash. The idea is that there is the presence of Hashem that rests there. And the idea is that it's not enough to stop with the presence of Hashem, but we have to elevate ourselves and, and become better people when we come to Beis Amikdash. And by the way, this is something that became a challenge throughout uh, history as time went by. Beis Amikdash was still around, but in certain times and certain occasions, or was the Koyanim that weren't uh, good enough. For example, the sons of Eli Akoye, <clears throat> uh, the famous story in the Navi about uh, uh, the fact that they didn't even bring the offerings to Hashem. They ate the majority. They kept it for themselves and they ate a lot and they disrespected the people that came towards Beis Amikdash, towards the Mishkan, sorry. And we know that there were times where people used to buy the right to become the high priest, for example. They used to buy it from the Romans. And they used to die every Yom Kippur because whoever entered the Holy of Holies, Kodesh HaKadoshim, without being worthy of uh, entering such a place, he did not uh, leave there alive. And people nevertheless used to buy it. They used to want to just witness this holy place once a year. So the holy place is there. But still, we've got to have our avoider. We've got to be worthy of actually relating and, 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 and connecting to this place, elevating ourselves. And this is through the avoider. So after all, once again, it's a combination between the two. And the truth is that uh, um, the focus of the Maimonides and the Nachmanides is on two different aspects. There are two different ways to connect to Hashem. There is a revealed way and there is a hidden way. There's a high holidays process. There are certain hidden that they are called, and this reminds me of an, an interesting joke where there was once a, a, a priest that uh, uh, came over to a rabbi, told him, tell me I'm a bit confused. I don't know how many davenings you people daven every single day. I asked one Jew, he told me we daven three times a day. I asked another Jew, he said we daven four times a day. And I asked a third Jew and he said we daven five times a day. So how many times do you dub it? So the rabbi told him, you know what? You went to three different types of Jews. The Jew that told you that we dub three times a day, he's, a, he's a, a Jew that comes every single day to shul. So he knows on a regular day, we dub three times a day. That Jew that told you that we dub four times a day, <clears throat> he comes to shul only on Shabbos. And he knows on Shabbos, we dub four times because we have an additional davening, the Musaf, the Musaf davening right after Kriyat Torah. And then the third Jew that you said, he told you that, that, well, that we daven five times a day, he comes only on Yom Kippur. And on Yom Kippur, we know we daven an extra davening, we daven five davenings, we daven also the Neila. So, there are certain levels when we come to talk about our connection to Hashem, our relationship with Hashem. And there's the revealed level, which is the day-to-day -day level where we are obligated to keep the mitzvot and to uh, learn Torah and to daven. And this is the, the person that, uh, uh, that says three times a day we daven. And this is what the Maimonides is speaking about. This is the revealed level, the connection to Hashem which is based on the offerings. And today we know the offerings are expressed by our davening. And then there's the inner part, the pnimius of the connection of a yid and a Kodesh Baruch. 
the deeper aspect to our connection isn't limited to the offerings. Even if someone doesn't bring offerings, he still has a soul. He still has a neshama. And this neshama is still connected to, uh, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, still connected to Kodesh HaKadosh and to the Holy of Holies. It's still connected to the presence of Hashem in the world. And this is the difference and the focus between, between the Rambam and the uh, Ramban. Whether we are focusing on the inner part of the connection or the revealed part of the connection. So this is the idea of the difference between, uh, um, between the, the Rambam and the Ramban. What is the idea of Beis English? So the idea is both. Also a place where Hashem rests, but also a place where we can express and we can elevate ourselves and become more and more holy. And here's the other part. And this is the eternity of Beis Amikdash. The eternity of Beis Amikdash, the eternity of the Mishkan is very interesting. Because we know that when we go today, for example, uh, so although Beis Amikdash itself is destroyed. But we know that the place, Harabais, is holy. And that's why we aren't allowed to go there. And we should not go there. There'll come a time where it will be right to go. And that's the time to go. The Rebbe always spoke about, and the Rebbe spoke to the, um, if I'm not mistaken, the chief rabbi, the chief army rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo Getz, and he spoke to him. Rabbi Shlomo Getz wanted to reveal the place of the ark. He wanted to dig under certain tunnels after Israel conquered uh, um, East Jerusalem. And um, the Rebbe told him not to. The Rebbe said, when time will be right, we will receive the ark in the right way without needing to come at night and to make sure the Muslims don't know that we are digging, etc., etc. So that's the Rebbe's approach. But here's about the eternity of the place. What makes the place holy? So it's very interesting. Because the walls of Beis Amigdash they were destroyed, which means the, the holiness did not last forever. On the other hand, the actual place, that's still holy till our very day. And the difference is who created it, who made it. We know that the temple was made by humans. It was made by King Solomon, and it was made by all of his uh, uh, um all of the people then, holy people, they might be great people, <clears throat> but nevertheless, it was made by humans. And something that humans make, the holiness there cannot last forever. On the other hand, the Kedusha, the holiness in the place itself, that's something that humans can't make. We did not make the place itself. Hashem decided to rest his presence there in that specific place. He was the one that made that place holy. And that, that lasts forever. That's why it's so interesting. We see that when King Solomon, he was the one that built Beis Amigdash. King David, he was the one that started the plans. But Hashem said, King David cannot build the Beis Amigdash hands, even though the blood was for good reasons. He was fighting the wars of Hashem against the Philistines, etc., against a few other nations that were bothering Am Yisrael. But Solomon, King Shlomo, he was the one that actually built Beis Amikdash because he was a man of peace. And Beis Amikdash is all about peace. But when King Solomon When King Solomon 
wanted to see a sign that Hashem actually rests in Beis Amikdash, and he was waiting for the fire to come down from the heavens and to rest on the altar. And it did not happen. It took quite a while. And King Solomon prayed a special prayer. Hashem Eloikim al Toshev Pnei Meshichecha Zohra Lechasdei David Avdecha. Remember King David. Remember David, your servant. There was something about King David who was so humble. As we can see his relationship in Tehillim with Hashem, the bittle that he had towards Hashem. David Avdecha, David, your servant. He is the one, and through him is the one to actually cause Kedusha in the place. Because when Hashem wants to rest in a certain place, in a physical place, there's got to be what's called bitul. Bitul means uh, uh, humility. And that comes through only a person like David, who out of many, many kings, many tzaddikim, he was known for his great bitul to Hashem. The fact that he is referred to as a servant of Hashem represents more than all how much he was humble. And that's why only through him, Hashem, after all, when King Solomon prayed and mentioned his father, King David, David Abdecha, David, your servant, Hashem actually rested in Beisamik. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to seeing you, Bezrat Hashem, next week.